The situation may arise when you want to record MIDI using a synthesizer which is elsewhere in the studio, away from your keyboard and mouse. I myself have two keyboards and one pad controller which are located away from my workstation. So this has prompted me to find a solution to remotely control the transport functions in Samplitude. A useful solution is to assign certain keys of your synthesizer keyboard to trigger functions like record, playback and undo. This can indeed be done in Samplitude Pro X by mapping these particular functions using the hardware controller window, therefore using the MIDI keyboard as a remote transport. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to map the top three keys of my 61 key WSA1 synth so that they can indeed function as a remote transport. The top track is a MIDI track sending MIDI to the WSA1. Track 2 is the audio return of the synth and I have monitoring enabled. I actually have two keyboards located against the right wall of my studio about five foot away from me. The camera is showing the keys of my WSA1. So the plan is to record MIDI using that keyboard and control the Samplitude transport functions with the top three keys. So now I'm going to take you through the process of setting this up. The first thing you need to do is make sure Samplitude is the active program and press Y to open the options menu. Next, select the fourth entry down on the left named Hardware Controller. So you should be presented with an empty window, unless of course you have a hardware controller already set up. Even if you have, you can still add extra sub controllers. Click on the Add New button and choose a new template from the top of the list. Next, from the MIDI input dropdown, I'm going to choose the MIDI port of the WSA1, which is the RADAT MIDI port 2. There's no need to choose an output as you'll only be using the keyboard to trigger commands. The next step is to click on the Customize Controller tab and enable the MIDI Learn tick box. So now I'm going over to the keyboard and I'm going to press each of the top three keys. Every time I press a key, the MIDI information will appear in the controller window. So that's the three keys learnt. It's important to remember to turn off MIDI Learn afterwards. I'm selecting the first entry and you can see that button has been entered in the Type column. If you right click, there's a list of the different control elements, but button is fine for what we need. Now I'm right clicking in the Function column and the Select Function window has opened. At the top it says click here for list of functions. So I'm left clicking in this area and I'm going to transport record. Click OK and you'll see the record command has been added to the top entry. I'm now choosing the second entry and right clicking and selecting transport play stop. For the third entry this time I'm going to edit undo. These are the three transport commands I decided will be most useful for me, although you may decide you want to use a different combination. Plus, of course, you could always use more than three keys, although you'll need to avoid using the assigned keys when you're playing a part. So I'm clicking Apply and returning to the Basic Settings tab, and I'm choosing Save As. And I'm going to save that as WSA1 Remote. Clicking on save. So now that controller template has been saved. Click OK to exit the window. Before I continue, there is one small tweak you may need to make. When you record a MIDI part, it's possible you may get a window which pops up asking you whether you want to save or delete the recording. It's probably a good idea to disable this message as it may interrupt the workflow when using the remote keyboard functions. If you haven't already disabled this message, just tick the Don't show this message again checkbox and it will no longer appear after every recording. So if I do another recording, when I hit stop, there is no message. If you decide you don't like the take, you can just press the key which is assigned to undo on the synthesizer. 
If at any time you want to restore the message box, just press Y and go to the General tab and click the Reset All Don't Show This Message Again boxes button and the message box will start appearing again. I'm now going to test the functions I've just programmed, starting with the uppermost white key, which is assigned to record. Now I'm going to press the second uppermost white key, which is assigned to play stop. That seems to be working OK. Press the same key again for playback. That's all working correctly. Now if I decide I don't like that take, I can press the uppermost black key, which is assigned to undo. Great, that's working as well. I want to re-record the part, so I'm pressing the uppermost white key again. Press the playback key. So everything seems to be working correctly. I can now record my keyboard away from the computer by using the remote keys I've just programmed. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Until next time, goodbye for now.